The other entertainment story from yesterday where we kind of went, whoa, although some people didn't go, whoa. Yeah. There was a lot of I knew this, which I can't stand. If you knew it, then why didn't you report it? Shut up. But this one kind of really hit people, too. Uh, Jimmy Fallon and The Tonight Show. Rolling Stone came out with an article. 16 staffers went on the record, 14 former and two current. And they said that their experience working on The Tonight Show uh, was not great. There were good days with Jimmy and there were bad days with Jimmy. And the rest of your day would be completely affected by his mood. Staffers say the ugly environment starts with Fallon, who would have erratic behavior. It trickled down. He's had nine showrunners slash producers in nine years. That is rare for a show at that level. That should tell you everything you need to know. That means uh, mm -hmm. things are no bueno. Also described as tense and pretty glum atmosphere. Some employees uh, contemplated suicide. Some employees would wow. cry in guest dressing rooms for hours because of some of the treatment. Jimmy Fallon reportedly on a Zoom call last night to his team apologized profusely. Uh, the, the, the wild part, one of the wildest parts to me, guys, is Rolling Stone also said in this article they contacted yeah. 80 people who were either on the staff or worked for Jimmy. Not one of them said it was a pleasant experience. Wow. Not one of them, which is rare when you go on background, that, and that's the term background, where you talk to people who've been part of the show a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not one of the 80 people said this was a good experience. Are you, like the whispers have been out there for a while about Jimmy. Were you shocked by the story or not? Not shocked, but uh, I didn't know it was to that extent. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. Um, when you watch back some of the interviews and things that happened on the show, mm -hmm. even though they edit it as much as possible because it is pre-taped, you still see certain reactions um, and his actions. If you really, really watch somebody, you can see that. So there are certain things where, you know, when he's dealing with uh, whatever celebrity he's interviewing, if it's not about him a little bit at times, he's very guarded and kind of upset about that. Uh, to further what you were saying about them contacting all of these former and... and no one wanted to go on the record saying something positive about him. Outside of the is 16. what it was. Yeah, yeah, outside of that. So those other 80 or whatever it was, 60 or 80. No one wanted to go and say, hey, I have something positive to say about him on the record. That is massive. Um, Tam, that's very problematic. It's problematic, and I was shocked. I didn't even know there were whispers about Jimmy Fallon. I had no idea, and I'll be one of those people that'll watch back those interviews now, and then I'll notice mm -hmm. things, but other than that, watching it firsthand, I would just think, you know what, Jimmy Fallon is a happy-go-lucky guy. Right. I am stunned by this, and then when you hear just the number, like the 80 people and nobody saying anything positive, everyone saying that this was a negative experience. Uh, that and the nine producers, nine showrunners in nine years. Imagine that you get this job of a lifetime, producing The Tonight Show, a legacy show, and you can barely stay there for a year because it's so bad. One of the lines in the article was, was the showrunners, the producers just wouldn't, they couldn't tell Jimmy no. Mm -hmm. Like that was the type of environment that this Rolling Stone article put out there. Um, a, a, a couple things. N no one on background wanted to defend Jimmy. The only person who did was Jerry Seinfeld. There's a part in this article that cites an interview Jerry Seinfeld was doing with Jimmy Fallon, and it didn't make it to air. They cut it out of the broadcast, but Jimmy Fallon at one point brings over the cue card holder and starts to berate the person, and Jerry Seinfeld says, you need to apologize to that person. Mm -hmm. and, th and the way it was quoted in the article, mm -hmm. it was awkward sauce. And they cut it, the fact that they cut it out of the broadcast tells you all you need to know. But Jerry Seinfeld said that's blown way out of proportion. He was quick on that statement yesterday, Jerry Seinfeld. Um, the other aspect to it is I, I understand a lot of what I read in here, but I also understand that's a really high stress job. To be, to be a late night show that wants to stay number one, there's going to be stresses with that. And there are some people that won't be able to handle that. I think we have to acknowledge that. That is not a small market show. With that said, I don't like a lot of what I read in this article. And the, the one really interesting thing I read, and I'm not saying this was the reason, but because of the writer strike that's going on right now, Jimmy Fallon paid his writers and employees for three weeks and then stopped. Then this article comes out. I'm not saying there's a connection, but that timing right. to me is worth noting because this article hadn't been written last year and wasn't written two years ago and wasn't written three years ago. It's written now. And you have a lot of people on the record, enough, 16 is a lot of people on the record, yeah. to, to give this story. So just food for thought. But with that said, Jimmy Fallon has some work to do. This is not a good moment for him. Not a good moment for him. But you do realize that the, of the 16, 
only two currently work there. Correct. Mm -hmm. So Correct. there's the other 14 who have already left who were not getting paid no. already, you know, mm -hmm. and were willing to band together to speak out. You know, when, when this, things like this happen, a bunch of clips will come out and this and that. So the, one of the ones I saw was uh, Steve Martin and Martin Short. Saw that one. Yeah, right? And they're on there, and Martin Short's like, man, you are, you're good. You, out of all the late night hosts, you pretend to care the most. And he's like, your phoniness is unbelievably great. To his face, he said To that. his face to during the interview. his face. And he's just like, ha, ha, ha. But he has to laugh. Like, what are you going to say to that? Steve Martin didn't move. Steve Martin was right next to him. Yeah. Didn't move. Martin Short was doing yeah. it, and, and Steve Martin was just like. That's worth retweeting. I'll throw that out later. Like, so when that's you have wild. legends in the game kind of saying things like that to your face during an interview, which aired. Who aren't afraid of you. No. Martin Short's they don't not need afraid of most people. You. No. Yeah. Also, new season, Only Murders. I just, I just, it's good. I have no time because it's, it's tiff, good. but it's good. I I'm saw the first episode. The show. All gotta right, watch it. you gotta watch yeah, it. Gotta watch you gotta watch it. it. Yeah. All right, to be continued <laughs> on the Tonight Show front. Does Conan O'Brien have a way back onto the Tonight Show? Oh, wow. We'll find oh, out. Can you imagine? We'll find out. After all this time? I was always a pro Conan guy. We'll find out mm -hmm. where this goes.